How proud am I to be uh, able to perform for a once only show at Gyra in the Australian Poetry Hall of Fame. My name is, and I go by the name of Phil In, and you can catch me on YouTube if, uh, if you quite enjoy my poetry. Um, I've got a whole selection of poems there, mainly by Henry Lawson. I'm a bit of a Henry Lawson aficionado and quite enjoy it at the moment. Luckily enough, um, I have been selected to portray Henry at various festivals and in Golgong. So you can find me at Golgong on the June long weekend next year. Or in um, Sydney, I'm doing September the 6th, which was unluckily enough, was when he passed away. I was invited down to do his anniversary at his gravesite this year. So we'll start off with a lovely little ditty. This one's by a fellow called William Williams. Now, William Williams was a, uh, a fellow who did 20 years for murder. He was a Salvation Army captain and um, married to a lovely wife, two children, who happened to get killed in a car accident, so he hit, he hit the, uh, the grog and, and one day ended up smacking a guy over the head with a piece of 4 2 with a rusty nail in it and killed him. So he did 20 years of jail, in jail at Petridge, which is now shut. But lo and behold, when he got out, he ended up coming up to a place called Eden and he wrote this poem which I call Walk With Me. I was sitting on the beach one day, feeling all alone, when a touch so soft and gentle in a voice said, welcome home. Come, walk along the beach with me, you're living here for free. See life with open minds and hearts and walk along with me. The nature's beauty shall surround you, when you look it'll be everywhere. It'll be in the flowers, creeks and streams, and even in the air. It'll be on the highest of the mountains, and the valleys far below. God's beauty shall surround you. It'll be everywhere you wish to go. William Williams. Okay, uh, following on from that, we'll do a Henry one, which uh, is basically a lovely introductory one to it's called Over the Ranges and Into the West. Let me just get rid of that tame. We'll just put that there, see if it's going to sit, sit, stay. I can change hands that way. <laughs> Over the Ranges and Into the West. Then others sing praise of their sea girted isles. Then give me the bush with its limitless miles. Then it's over the ranges and into the west, to the seas of wild boyhood. We love them the best. We'll ride and we'll ride from the city afar to the plains where the cattle and sheep stations are. Where the stockmen ride hard and the drover starts forth on his long lonely journey way up to the north. When your money is low and your luck has gone down, there's no place so low as the streets of the town. There's nothing but worry, dread and unrest. So where over the ranges and into the west. The drought in the west may spread ruin around, but the dread drought of life in the city is found. So I'd much rather tread on the long dusty way, where each one you meet says, G'day mate, g'day. Henry Lawson. <laughs> now, Henry's poetry um, it has a lot to do with the bush, because in them days we were going through in the 18, uh, late 1890s, 1900s, we were going through a hard time and there was a lot of depression and also we were in drought. And this is a story about the selection, which, which was a piece of land given to people when they came back from the war, they could pick a selection, which was 100 acres, 10 acres by 10 acres. And this is called When the Children Come Home. On a lonely selection, far out in the west, an old woman works all her days without rest. And she croons as she toils near the sky's glassy dome. Sure, I'll keep the old place till the children come home. She mends all the fences, she grubs and she ploughs, 
she drives the old horse and she milks all the cows. And she sings to herself as she thatches the stack. Sure, I'll keep the old place till the children come back. It's been five weary years since her old husband died and oft as he lay on his deathbed he sighed. Sure, one man can bring up ten children he can and it is strange that ten sons cannot keep one old man. Whenever the scowling old sundowners come and cuttingly ask, Is the master at home? Be off, she says, with your blarney and carp, or I'll call my son Andy, he's working be up. Get out, she says, though she trembles with fear, for she lives all alone and no neighbours are near. But she thinks to herself, in times of despond, that the boys are at work in the paddock beyond. Ah, none of her children need follow the plough, and some have grown rich in the cities here now. Yet, she says, they may come when the shearing is done. So I'll keep the old place, if it's only for one. Henry Lawson. Well, I'll give you one of mine now, just to cut it up a little bit. Henry gets a little bit serious and dire. And then I'll chuck him a funny one just after this one, all right? <coughs> this is um, one I wrote in 2000 and, or 2009. It's called What I Like About Poetry. What I like about poetry is its various forms. The written word transformed, performing. The poet is a fool with writing as a tool and words are a structural calling. It has so many faces, stories over the ages by sages of situations and places. Poetry is the conduit to portray the multi-stories of cultural human races. What I like about poetry is to be satirical, factual, serious or funny. The poet is the muse who has his thoughts reassembled, compiled and without money. Rhyme, rhythm, spoken or sung, now we have poetry and music called rap. Poetry is the passion from within that deals with all of life's crap. What I like about poetry is to create a world of observation and thought, fantasy in the real world of make-believe at a particular time now caught. The cloak of reason where the pen stands mighty against the sword, poverty and passion, money and greed, where's the common sense in the accord? Now on this earth, what is the human worth as we rate the land? Take stock. Will he take a turn to turn back the clock or just be a shave on a rock? What I like about poetry is a means to an end and who is really your friend on this supersonic highway of man's destruction? Leading us on to life's end. Thank you. Oh, you like that one? Beautiful. I'll give you a funny one now. You should get a little bit of a laugh out of this one, all right? This one's um, called uh, Down Boy by Blue the Shearer. Mum's old dog had caught the munch, the faithful family pet. Was losing all his lovely fur, so mum took him to the vet. The vet prescribed a tablet for the dog to have that night. He told her not to force it down in case the dog should bite. So mum put it in a sausage, put the sausage on a plate, put the plate in the fridge and took off to the fate. Well, Dad came home from fishing. He was hungry, tired and hot. He saw the cork and snorker and he scoffed the bloody lot. When Mum came home from town, she said to me, Now, where's your father at? I said, Oh, I seen him underneath the tank, sleeping on a mat. When she went to wake him, she said, What's the matter, dear? He said, Bugger if I know, can you scratch behind me ear? When she found the sausage gone, she nearly threw a fit. She rang the vet to tell him, and he chuckled quite a bit. He said, he should be okay if he hasn't already died. Just pat him gently on the head and tie him up outside. Well, Dad's almost recovered now, but sometimes in the park, he rolls on the grass 
and runs around the bark. And it gets a bit embarrassing when he's out with mum and me, because if nature calls, he cocks his leg up against a tree. Oh, blue shearer. Yeah, that was him. Um, I'll go back to Henry Lawson a bit now, eh? I like my Henry Lawson, he's a great poet and he, he did some fantastic words. This one's called um, Since Then. Now I've only just learnt this in the last couple of weeks, so we'll just see how it comes out, alright? It's a new poem. It's basically about when Henry, was, Henry got a job as a, uh, um, a journalist in Brisbane at the time. And lo and behold, he comes across one of his old swaggy mates that he must have been out in the back with. And they meet in the street. This is called Since Then. I met Jack Ellis in town today. Jack Ellis, the old mate Jack. It was ten years ago from the castle raid. We carried our swags together away to the never again out back. But the times have altered since those old days, and times have changed the men. Ah well, there's little to blame or praise. Jack Ellis and I have tramped long ways, on different tracks since then. His hat was battered, his coat was green, the toes of his boots wore through. But the pride was his, t'was I felt mean. I wish that my collar was not so clean, nor the clothes I wore so new. He saw me first, and knew it was I, the holiday swell he met. Why have we no faith in each other? Ah, why? He made as though he would pass me by, for he thought that I might forget. He ought to have known me better than that, by the tracks that we tramped far out. The sweltering scrub and the blazing flat, and the heat came down through each old felt hat in the hellborn western drought. The checks we made and the shanty sprees, the camps in the great blind scrub, the long wet tramps where plains were seas, and oracles worked in days like these for rum and tobacco and grub. Could I forget how he struck the same old tale in the nearer west when the first great test of our friendship came? But, well, there's little to praise or blame if our mateship stood the test. Tales, he said. Tales, he said. Um, and his face was stern. No, he, he called heads, didn't he? Heads, he cried, and his face was stern. Tales with a friendly oath. We loved her fair, we had much to learn, and each was stabbed to the heart in turn by the girl who loved us both. Well, the last day lost on the Lincoln Plain, when I staggered, half blind, half dead, with a burning throat and a tortured brain, and the tank when we came to the track again was 17 miles ahead. Was 17 miles ahead. Ah, uh, where's it gone? Come on. Um, that's when, ah uh, yeah, that, that's when, that's when death, that's when life seemed finished and death began as down into the dust I sank. But he stuck to his mate like a bushman can, till I heard him say, Bear up, old man, in the shade of the log attack. He took my hand in a distant way. I thought how we parted last. We seemed like old, boy, old men who had naught to say. And, and who meet, good day, and who part, good day, who never have shared the past. I asked him in for a drink with me, Jack Ellis, my old mate Jack, but his manner was no longer careless and free. He followed, but not with the grin that he wore 
always in the scrub out black, out back. I tried to live in the past once more, or the present and past combined. But the days in between I could not ignore, for I couldn't help notice the clothes he wore, and he couldn't but notice mine. He placed his glass on the polished bar and wouldn't fill up again. For he is prouder than most men are. Jack Ellis and I have tramped too far on different tracks since then. He said he had a mate to meet and I'll see you again, said he. And he hurried away through the crowded street and the rattle of buses and the scrape of feet seemed suddenly loud to me. And I somehow wish the time would come when less would be left to fate, when a boy could start on the track from home with equal chances and no old chum have more or less than his mate. Henry Lawson. That's all right, that's the first time I've ever done that one in public. You're quite happy. You're quite happy if you want to leave. I'm not. I haven't got hold of you. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to see any more, it's fill in on YouTube. Pleasure. All right. I'm going to hit you with um, the thought process. Then this is one that I wrote in 2013. See if you can grab hold of this one. The path of decision is hopefully a get it right mission, making the thought processes not one of biased thinking. For one only has an instance with very little assistance when the distant outcome may be detrimental to living. When one is at point X, they don't know what to expect, for they have dreams to fulfil in these times of instant need. With perception being clouded by the wants and needs shrouded in a cloak of unreasoning, making the future one to heed. There are various factors that cause these mental reactors. Love, finance, dreams, situations of total hopelessness, <laughs> situations of total hopelessness are contributing to the demise in how one should realise there is a bright side if one reaches for wholesomeness. This is where one needs a seer to allay that path of internal fear. A visionary with the prognostication of spiritual vaticination. One who has the sight to give one that path of foresight through the small window we peer to gain illumination. Along that pathway there are too many potholes to say as one stares out to the future. One's focal point is in view. But as one tracks that trail, the boundary seems so frail for the hyper-anticipation previously has gone askew. Those dreams one has when growing to be mums and dads, making one's lifelong decisions, reaching for the heights, one's euphoria tolerates alone when in anticipation mode and the swelling of success and pride are full of delights. Although that exterior vision could hide a questioning derision in the mind of one who has fallen in a doubting and culpable fear, that mental loss comes at a cost making one feel remotely lost when in the approaching hindsight light of a decision held dear. To the depths of despair, seeking without hope or a care, are the glimpses the mind allows in that eclectic state, and so forms confusion that evolves into fleeting exclusion with the signals from some coming to others too late. This shines of a melancholy mood that makes one brood over the foreboding hindsight that wasn't in the foresight, subjecting one to self-doubt, increasing the mental burnout, spiralling in the vortex of blue from the lack of tactical insight. Yet, with the facility of deduction, one should make a reduction on the thought processes that create this insipid illusion. For as the exterior forces of fate one doesn't control mate, and that is what transpires into the internal confusion. With this then one must deduce that when in mental use to put hindsight before foresight to gain a clear insight on the issues that one wishes and not to confuse. 
the understanding of living life by just doing right. Yeah, yeah, all done. Till yeah. 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 ah. I thought I read it before because um, yeah, I got into it as you say because I understood it. Yeah, take it, mate. It took me about five or six reads to realise what I've written. Yeah. <laughs> that was written in one go. That's not conspired or contrived or anything. That was. I came home from the, the meeting of the philosophers, mm. sat down at my table, and that's what came out. There's actually another four or five of them. There's another couple of them that are really darker than that one. Um, yeah, but I won't subject to, the, subject to those. I haven't learned them anyway. They're on the computer. It's called Swedenborg Philosophy. Yeah. Okay, where shall I go now? What would you like to hear? Is there any on that list that you would like to hear, um, Sky? Pick a poem off that list up there. Sitting on your desk. Just next to my iPad. That I haven't done yet. What about in the days when the world was wide? Yeah, that's Alright, in the days when the world was wide. The world is narrow, the ways are short, and our lives are dull and slow. For little is new where the crowds resort, and less where the wanderers go. Greater or smaller, the same old things we see by the dull roadside, and tired of all is the spirit that sings of the days when the world was wide. When the north was hale in the march of time, and the south and west were new, and the gorgeous east was a pantomime, as it seemed in our boyhood's view. When Spain was first on the waves of change, and proud in the ranks of pride, when all was wonderful, new and strange, in the days when the world was wide. Then a man could fight, if his heart were bold, and win if his faith were true. Were it love, or honour, or power, or gold, were all that our hearts pursue. Could live to the world for the family name, or die for the family pride. Could fly from sorrow, and wrong, and shame, in the days when the world was wide. They sailed away on ships that sailed, ere science controlled the main. Where the strong, brave heart of a man prevailed, as will never prevail again. They knew not whither, nor much they cared, let fate or the winds decide. The worst of the great unknown they dared, in the days when the world was wide. They raised new stars on the silent seas that filled their hearts with awe. They came to many a strange country, and marvellous sights they saw. The villagers gaped at the tales they told, and old eyes glistened with pride, when barbarous cities were paved in gold, in the days when the world was wide. T'was honest metal and honest wood, in the days of the outward bound, when men were gallant and ships were good, roaming the wide world round. The gods could envy a leader then, when, follow me lads, he cried, they faced each other and fought like men in the days when the world was wide. The good ship bound for the southern seas and the beacon was Ballarat, with a ship ahoy on the freshly breeze. Where bound? And what ship's that? The emigrant train to New Mexico, the rush from the Lachlan side. Ah, faint is the echo of westward ho in the days when the world was wide. South, east and west, in advance of time, and I in advance of thought, these brave men rose to a height sublime, and is it for this they fought? And is it for this damned life who praise the godlike spirit that died at Eureka Stockade in the roaring days, in the days when the world was wide? We fight like women, and feel as much the thoughts of our hearts we guard, where scarcely the scorn of a god could touch, the sneer of a sneak kid's heart, the treacherous tongue and powerful pen, the weapons of curse decide, 
They faced each other and fought like men in the days when the world was wide. Think of it all, of the life that is. Study your friends and foes. Study the past and answer this. Are these times better than those? The lifelong quarrel, the paltry spite, the sting of your poison pride. No matter who fell, it would bear the fight as in the days when the world was wide. Boast as you will of your mateship now, crippled and mean and sly. The lines of suspicion on friendship's brow were traced in the days gone by. There was room in the long free lines of the band to fight for it side by side. There was beating room in the heart of the man in the days when the world was wide. With its dull brown days of a shilling an hour, the dreary year drags round. Is this the result of old England's power, the born of the outward bound? Is this the sequel of westward ho, and the days of whatever betide? Sons of the exiles. No. Battle for freedom is north by the door, follow whatever betide. Sons of the Exiles, march, march on, march to the world grows wide. Henry Lawson. Yeah. I think I left, left out two lines of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not to worry. Um, oh, two fools. How about that? The Dave W.G. Goods one that you've got. You like that one? Oh, yes, please. You like you know it. I don't, that's why I want to hear it. Oh, okay. Two Fools by W.T. Goodrich. There is the fool that spends his money fast, grows old, dies, a pauper to the last. There is the fool that keeps it to the end and leaves it for the other fool to spend. W.T. Good. Mm -hmm. Short and sweet. It is, yeah. That's quick. Um, there's a couple more that I'd like to do by Jim Graham. You know Jim Graham? Have you heard of him? Yeah. Jim Graham and Henry Lawson. Henry was 25. Jim Graham was 18 when they when they walked from Burke to Humberford mm. uh, together. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the first one is called To an Old Mate. Old mate, I still am tramping where plains and mountains meet. There's bush where I'm camping, the river's at my feet. But there are empty spaces out west I wish to see, and with are old bush faces, so come along with me. There's still the empty spaces, there's still the open track, and kindly old bush faces will smile and welcome back. So gather up your blankets and pack away your pen. The old bush haunts are calling, and we'll see them again. Cast off your tie and collar, and let your whiskers grow, and we can tramp together where western rivers flow. You'll need a store of paper, so bring your pen along, for we will find some copy, 100 columns strong. So roll your rug and blanket, you know the kind of swag that rests easy on your shoulder and doesn't bulge or sag. Make it light and handy, the weather won't be cold, we need no useless burden, for we are growing old. And send a letter saying, when you are coming down, you know where I am staying, I'll meet you in the town. I know you hate the city and the others know the rest, and they can save their pity, but we are facing west. From Wagga to Menindee, the plains are rolling wide, the flocks and herds are grazing along the Lachlan side. The ewes and lambs are bleating, the cones and cutters hum. They seem like voices calling for you and me to come. So come with me in battle, as in the olden days, Forget the din and rattle and crowded city ways. In its great open spaces, the bush is big and free. In its great empty places, there's peace for you and me. Jim Graham. Now there's one that uh, I keep forgetting to do that I keep getting asked for by Henry Lawson, and that's called The Glass on the Bar. And I'll use, um, I'll use, um, anyway, the glass on the bar. 
Three bushmen one morning rode up to an inn, and one of them called for the drinks with a grin. That other returned from the trip to the north, and eager, eager to greet them, the landlord came forth. He absolutely poured a glass of three star and set that drink down with the rest of the bar. There, that is for Harry, he said, and it's queer. That's the very same glass he drank from last year. His name's on the glass, you can read it like print. He scratched it himself with an old piece of flint. I remember his drink, it was always three star. And the landlord looked out through the door of the bar. He looked at the horses and counted but three. You're always together. Where's Harry? cried he. Oh, sadly they looked at the glass and they said, You may put that away, for our old mate is dead. But one, gazing out over the ridges afar, said, We owe him a shout, leave the glass on the bar. They thought of the faraway grave on the plain, they thought of the comrade who came not again. They lifted their glasses, and sadly they said, We drink to the name of a mate who is dead. And the sunlight streamed in, and a light like a star seemed to glow in the depth of that glass on the bar. And still in that shanty a tumbler is seen, that stands by the clock ever polished and clean. And often a stranger will read as they pass the name of a bushman engraved on a glass. And although on that shelf a dozen there are, that glass never stands with the rest on the bar. Henry Lawson. Ah, yeah. uh, well, we'll finish up with uh, the professional wanderer, which is what I tend to do. I'm a bit of a wanderer. I've been all around the country. Da, 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 da. The professional wanderer. When you've knocked about the country, been away from home for years, when the past by distance softened nearly fills your heart with tears, you are haunted oft, wherever or however you may roam, by a fancy you ought to go and see the folks at home. You forget the ancient quarrels, little things that used to jar, and you'll think of how they worry, how they wonder, how you are. You will think you serve them badly, and your own part you'll condemn, for it strikes you that you surely be a novelty to them. For your voice is somewhat altered, and your face is somewhat changed, and your views on men and matters over wider fields have ranged. Then it's time to save your money, or watch it how it goes. Then it's time to grab a Gladstone, and a decent suit of clothes. Then it's time to practice daily with a hairbrush and a comb, till you drop in unexpected on the folks and friends at home. When you've been at home for some time, and the novelty's worn off, and old chums no longer court you, and your mates begin to scoff, when the girls no longer kiss you, crying, Jack, how you have changed! When you're strained to your relations, and their manner seems estranged. When the old domestic quarrels round the table thrice a day, make it seem like the old times, make you wish you'd stayed away. When in short you've spent your money in the goodness of your heart, and your clothes are getting shabby, then it's high time to depart. Henry Lawson. Hey, is that just about do it? You don't do one more or not? <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Much appreciated. That's what I like, mate. That's good. A 34 minute set. Was that all that was? That was, exactly, yeah.